Imagine waking up to the news that $170 million worth of life-saving COVID-19 ventilators were sold for scrap metal. Shocking, isn't it? It felt like a punch to the gut, a cruel joke, a brutal reality check. The news broke out like wildfire, engulfing every social media platform, every news outlet, every conversation. It was the kind of news that made you stop and question everything. The initial revelation of this scandal was nothing short of a bombshell. It was a regular day until an anonymous source leaked the information, and, suddenly, it wasn't. The disbelief was palpable. People were outraged, shocked, and most of all confused. How could this happen? How could such a colossal blunder occur? Officials were just as taken aback. Statements were released, press conferences were held, and the blame game began. But amidst the chaos, one question was on everyone's lips. How did this happen? How did we get here? To understand this, we need to go back to the start of the pandemic when the world was in desperate need of ventilators. The onset of the pandemic was a time of global panic and uncertainty. COVID-19, a respiratory virus, was a new unseen enemy, and countries worldwide were grappling with how to provide adequate health care to those affected. One of the most significant challenges was the shortage of ventilators, critical pieces of medical equipment that help patients breathe when they can't do so on their own. Ventilators became the lifeline for critically ill COVID-19 patients and suddenly, they were in high demand across the globe. Countries were scrambling, trying to procure as many as they could, and manufacturers were struggling to keep up with the demand. It was in this state of crisis that Health Canada stepped in. Recognizing the urgent need for ventilators, Health Canada made a decision to invest heavily in procuring these life-saving machines. They allocated a staggering sum of $170 million for this purpose. It was a move that was seen as proactive and necessary, considering the escalating situation. With this substantial investment, Health Canada managed to procure a significant number of ventilators. The exact number is not publicly known, but we can assume that it was enough to cater to the projected needs of the Canadian healthcare system at that time. This procurement was a significant relief, not just for healthcare professionals, but for the patients and their families as well. This move by Health Canada was hailed as a step in the right direction, a much-needed action in a time of global crisis. It gave hope to many that Canada was prepared to face the worst-case scenario, that they were doing everything possible to protect their citizens. So Health Canada had a massive stockpile of ventilators, but what went wrong? Health Canada was sitting on a gold mine of ventilators, but then the unexpected happened. As the battle against COVID-19 raged on, the world saw advancements in treatments and vaccines that began to turn the tide. The war was far from over, but the introduction of these new weapons gave us a fighting chance. And as we began to adapt and learn how to combat the virus more effectively, the demand for ventilators started to decline. Health Canada, like many other health organizations worldwide, had initially rushed to stockpile ventilators to combat the pandemic. These pieces of equipment were crucial in the early days of the crisis when respiratory complications were the primary concern. But as the situation evolved, so did our understanding and our response. With the rollout of vaccines and more effective treatments, the need for ventilators began to drop. And suddenly, Health Canada found itself with a surplus of these life-saving devices, but this wasn't a cause for celebration, instead it was the beginning of a financial burden. These ventilators, once seen as a precious commodity, were now sitting idle gathering dust in warehouses. Each one represented a significant investment, and with the reduced demand, their value plummeted. Health Canada was left holding a bill for equipment that was no longer needed in the quantities initially anticipated. The cost of storage, maintenance, and depreciation quickly added up turning the ventilator surplus into a financial drain. Health Canada was faced with a dilemma. What to do with the excess ventilators? Storing them indefinitely was not a viable option. Neither was destroying them. After all, they were still functional, still capable of saving lives if the need arose. Struggling to get rid of the surplus and recover some costs, Health Canada made a decision that would shock the nation. In a move that left many scratching their heads, Health Canada decided to sell the ventilators as scrap metal, a decision that some might call a paradox of thrift, considering the ventilators were initially purchased for a whopping $170 million. The process of selling the ventilators was as bewildering as the decision itself. A handful of scrap metal companies were involved in the transaction. These companies, known for dealing with discarded materials, were suddenly handling medical equipment that held significant value just a short time ago. 
The ventilators, once considered crucial life-saving devices, were now being weighed and priced based on their metallic worth. The amount of money recovered from this sale? Well, that's where the irony gets thicker. The return was a mere fraction of the initial investment. The ventilators, bought for a small fortune, were sold for cents on the dollar. As news of the sale broke, the public outcry was immediate and loud. People were in disbelief. How could essential medical equipment be discarded in such a way, especially during a global health crisis? Health workers and officials who had been on the front line fighting this pandemic expressed their shock and disappointment. They had seen firsthand how ventilators could mean the difference between life and death for COVID-19 patients. Government officials too were left stunned. The decision seemed to undermine the very essence of their efforts to safeguard public health. The outcry reached a fever pitch, with many demanding accountability for what they saw as a colossal misstep. This decision left the public and officials stunned and outraged. But what does this mean for Health Canada and the Canadian public? In the aftermath of this shocking revelation, questions are being asked and answers are demanded. The sale of $170 million worth of COVID-19 ventilators for scrap metal has had a profound impact, not only on Health Canada but also on the Canadian public. The potential consequences for Health Canada are far-reaching. Given the magnitude of this situation, investigations are inevitable. Governmental bodies, independent auditors, and other relevant authorities are likely to delve deep into the matter, scrutinizing every detail to uncover how such a monumental lapse in judgment could have occurred. These investigations could lead to legal actions against those found responsible. Lawsuits, fines, and other penalties could be on the horizon for Health Canada, depending on the outcome of these inquiries. Moreover, the public's trust in Health Canada has been severely shaken. In a time when the public health agency should be a beacon of reliability, this scandal has cast a long shadow of doubt. The Canadian citizens, who were supposed to be the beneficiaries of these ventilators, are now left feeling cheated and disillusioned. This breach of trust is not something that can be easily mended. Furthermore, this scandal has opened up a broader discussion about the importance of transparency and accountability in times of crisis. It has highlighted the need for stringent checks and balances, and for those in power to be held accountable for their actions. The public's demand for answers, for responsibility and for justice is a testament to the importance of these principles. In the wake of this scandal, Health Canada and other public health agencies must take strong measures to restore the public's faith. They must demonstrate their commitment to transparency, accountability, and public welfare through their actions, not just their words. This scandal serves as a stark reminder of the importance of transparency and accountability in times of crisis.